Usually the seed consists of some form of knowledge, some idea or plan, or some opportunity which would not have been available except through the change of thought habits forced by the adversity. 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 Welcome back to River Queen Conjure, No Narc Network TV, and Oshun Ajay exclusive. This is Dissecting the Devil Lesson 28, my people. Let's get it. Are those all the benefits available to human beings through failure? No. Failure is used by nature as a common language in which she chastises people when they neglect to adapt themselves to her laws. What most people don't understand or fail to connect up is the intimate and innate connection with, um, you know, Mother Nature, um, you know, the atmosphere, the weather, um, and these quote unquote natural disasters, um, and the connection with that, with human emotion, especially volatile or suppressed human emotion, okay? And so basically what the universe and our own um, our own realities mirror back to us is our inner um, landscape and what's going on with us emotionally inside, okay? And unfortunately, there have been, um, you know, whole generations of people who have been forced to suppress some very powerful energies in motion okay and so uh eventually okay meaning through a set of events um these emotions are going to manifest themselves in the outer reality okay and so this is what we are looking at when we look at these uh what, what we call quote unquote natural disaster okay and so what napoleon hill is trying to teach us in outwitting the devil here is that it's not nice to fool mother nature For example, the world war was man-made, 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 and destructive. Nature planted in the circumstances of the war the seed of an equivalent reprimand in the form of world depression. The depression was inevitable and inescapable. It followed the war as naturally as day follows night, and by the operation of the self-same law, the law of hypnotic rhythm. So basically what he's saying is because of the low vibrations of chaos uh, and destruction that were caused by the war, um, the depression followed the war just as naturally as the day follows the night because this is how hypnotic rhythm works. If you are successfully able to lower the vibrations of, you know, um, a, a mass of people or control the thoughts, of, you know, of a mass of people, then you are able to also control their reality. Okay, and this is what happened with the war and the following depression. It was the natural law of hypnotic rhythm in action. Okay? Am I to understand that the law of hypnotic rhythm is the same as that which Ralph Waldo Emerson called the law of compensation? The law of hypnotic rhythm is the law of compensation. So basically, the law of compensation states that whatever you put the most time, attention, and energy into is what is going to grow out as a tangible manifestation in your life, okay? In all forms of energy, in all forms of matter, and in all human relationships. Does the law of hypnotic rhythm operate quickly in all instances? 
For example, does this law immediately bless one with the benefits of positive application of thoughts, or curse one immediately with the results of negative thoughts? The law operates definitely, but not always swiftly. Both the benefits and the penalties incurred through the law by individuals may be harvested by others. Did by others. Did by others. And more than half a million people worldwide have lost their lives. The U.S., the worst affected country by far, has more than 125,000 deaths, with the number of new cases surging in the south, in the south, in the south, and the west. Either before or after their death. Florida reported a staggering nine and a half thousand infections on Saturday, and another eight and a half thousand on Sunday. Observe how this law works. The figures have increased fivefold, fivefold, fivefold in just two weeks, with officials blaming the increase on forcing upon one generation of people the effects of both the sins and the virtues of preceding generations. In the operation of all of nature's laws, the fourth dimension. Time, time, time is an inexorable factor. The length of time consumed by nature in the relation of effects to their causes depends in every instance on the circumstances at hand. No one can predict when or how the effects of that which you have caused are going to return to you, but what we can be sure of is that everything happens in divine timing and that Mother Nature has her own way of balancing the scales. Okay. Nature grows a pumpkin in three months. A good-sized oak tree requires a hundred years. She converts a hen's egg into a chicken in four weeks, but she requires nine months to convert the egg of a human being into an individual. So, like I said before, no one knows the time or the way in which the energy that you sent out is going to return to you. What we can be sure of is that it is going to return, okay? And so, depending upon the quality of energy that you've sent forth into the universe, you can either receive, you know, uh, destruction and chaos as your karma, or you can receive blessings on blessings as the return of what you have put out into the universe. Okay. I now have a better understanding of the potentialities of adversity and failure. You may go ahead now with your description of the next of the seven principles. What is your next principle? The next principle is environmental influence. Go ahead and describe the working principle of environmental influences as a determining factor in human destinies. Environment consists of all the mental, spiritual, and physical forces which affect and influence human beings. Environmental influences are everything from the books that you read to the food that you eat, the company you keep, the music you listen to, belief systems that you accept as your own truth, and basically everything around you that affects who you are. What connection, if any, is there between environmental influences and hypnotic rhythm? Hypnotic rhythm solidifies and makes permanent the thought habits of human beings. Thought habits are stimulated by environmental influences. In other words, the material on which thoughts are fed comes from one's environment. Thought habits are made permanent by hypnotic rhythm. What is the most important part of one's environment, the part which determines, more than all others, whether an individual makes positive or negative use of his mind? The most important part of one's environment is that created by his association with others. So the most important part of one's environment is the relationships that they create with the other people in that environment. Why is this important? Because all people absorb and take over, either consciously or unconsciously, the thought habits of those with whom they associate closely. Do you mean by this that constant association with a person whose thought habits are negative influences one to form negative thought habits? Yes. The law of hypnotic rhythm forces every human being to form thought habits which harmonize with the dominating influences of his environment. This is why we must be very careful of the company that we keep. And if you notice, when you began to grow spiritually, a lot of the people that you used to associate with are called friends. Uh, they begin to kind of fall by the wayside due to the simple fact that you no longer vibrate at the same frequency and you've simply outgrown one another. Okay? particularly that part of his environment created by his association with other minds. Then it is important that one select one's close associates with great care. Yes, 
One's intimate associate should be chosen with as much care as one chooses the food with which he feeds his body, with the object always of associating with people whose dominating thoughts are positive, friendly, and harmonious. So because of the ways that we do affect one another's energy and frequencies, we need to seek to, you know, um, associate with people that we can laugh with, that we can have fun with, that we can actually build and prosper together with in a positive direction. Okay. Which class of associates has the greatest influence upon one? One's partner in marriage and in the home. So, of course, your life partner, spouse, and your family are going to be the most influential relationships in your life. And one's associates in his occupation. Because of the amount of time that we spend um, with co-workers, um, sharing ideas, energy, you know, time and space, um, they also are a large influence in our lives. After that come close friends and acquaintances. Your close friends and acquaintances have an influence on your life largely for the same reason that your co-workers do. Um, simply for the, you know, the amount of time and space that you spend together sharing energy and ideas. This creates an energetic bond that makes it easy for friends and acquaintances to influence one another. Casual acquaintances and strangers have but little influence on one. Why does one's partner in marriage have so great an influence upon one's mind? Because the relationship of marriage brings people under the influence of spirit, of spirit, of spiritual forces of such weight that they become dominating forces of the mind. See, marriage is not a commodity that you carry on your head, but many people carry it on their head. It's just an arrangement so that socially there is some sense to the way you fulfill the needs that you have. A human being has needs, physical, psychological, emotional, financial, social, various kinds of needs. To fulfill these things in a dignified manner, we came up with something called marriage, so that it is fulfilled with enough framework. Your desires don't run wild and disturb everything in the society, some kind of a framework, so that it can be con conducted in a sensible manner. Now you have raised this to heaven because somebody told you marriages are made in heaven. <laughs> Only the unmarried ones think so. <laughs> so the master teacher is basically saying that Marriages are basically arrangements between, you know, uh, two people th where we are both basically agreeing to fulfill one another's, um, you know, human or carnal needs, um, you know, in exchange for that from one another. But it's, it's an arrangement between humans in that we have um, basically glorified this arrangement that I personally believe is uh, once you've reached a certain level of your spiritual growth, a certain level on your path, this quote unquote arrangement becomes a level of codependency that must be overcome if you are to progress to the next level in your own personal spiritual journey, okay? Marriage is an arrangement to fulfill certain aspect of your life. Don't complicate life by thinking we will walk together on the spiritual path, there's no such thing. Because spiritual path is not <laughs> not the path that you take into the Bellangiri mountains. You can walk in the park hand in hand. 
You can go shopping hand in hand. You can sit in a cinema hand in hand. You can't turn inward hand in hand. So this is precisely why when we reach a certain point on our spiritual path, in our spiritual growth, those things that are not conducive to our further growth and that are in fact a hindrance to our growth are usually removed from our lives um, unexpectedly by spirit, okay? Now, does it mean to say someone who's married what it means, let's understand this. Someone who was married means someone who's made an official arrangement for their needs in life. A formal arrangement for simple needs that a human being has, which are biological, which are psychological, which are social, many things. So these arrangements that you have made, conduct these arrangements gracefully, so there will be time and space for you to turn around. So basically what he's saying is that if you do choose to marry, make sure that the arrangement is such that you still have time for yourself and that you do take that time to go within and cultivate the relationship with your own spirit, even outside of the union with your spouse or partner, ensuring that you don't quote unquote lose yourself in the relationship, okay? Two sensible people, they can manage. If both of them understand the limitations of the arrangement and the possibilities of the arrangement, they can conduct it sensibly. If you try to raise it to heaven, expecting perfection, no flaws, and a Disney fairy tale marriage, you will see it will for sure crash. So, your marriage has nothing to do with your spiritual process because your spiritual process is an inward, inward, inward journey. So even if you are married, your marriage has nothing to do with your personal spiritual journey because it is a journey inward um, within the self. It is cultivating a relationship with the self. It is about healing the inner child. It is about facing the shadows and it is about expanding of the self, okay, with or without. Um, the spouse, the lover, the mate, um, the other half, okay? How may environmental influences be used to break the grip of hypnotic rhythm? All influences which establish thought habits are given permanency through the law of hypnotic rhythm. So basically, any thought that you make a habit and you can choose which thoughts that you think, um, these thoughts are given permanency in your reality by the law of hypnotic rhythm. Now, if you have experienced this um, on the dark side, going around in circles with a, you know, with a narcissist or being a narcissist, um, repeating the same behavior over and over again, then you know that this is true, okay? So if you change the direction um, of the energetic flow, okay? And you begin to program your mind with thoughts of things that you love, then those thoughts will also be given permanency by the law of hypnotic rhythm, okay? One may change the influences of his environment so that the dominating influences are either positive or negative. So even in your very personal environment, it's very important to, um, you know, pay attention to the energies that you are allowing to flow, um, you know, through your your home. You know, is, is the decor, um, is it bright, is it inviting, is it warm, is, is it comfortable, or is it dark, is it, um, you know, melancholy, is, is it a comfortable healing environment, or is it sort of off-putting? And so we need to be more mindful of, you know, what we surround ourselves with because it is infiltrating our minds, influencing the thoughts we think. And the law of hypnotic rhythm will make them permanent unless they are changed through one's habits of thought. Stating this truth in another way, one may submit himself to any environmental influence desired, whether positive or negative, and the law of hypnotic rhythm will make the influence permanent when it assumes the magnitude of thought habit. Is that the way the law works? That is correct. Be careful of all forces which inspire thought. 
Those are the forces which constitute environment and determine the nature of one's earthly destiny. Be careful of all forces which inspire thought. Okay, this could include, you know, cartoons, this could include uh, church sermons, this could include music or whatever they're showing on TV, uh, books that are that are being read. You know, we need to be very uh, discerning, especially in this day and age about, um, you know, what we are allowing, um, you know, to be fed into our minds as well as into the minds of the youth, okay? Because as he uh, stated, um, these things that we are allowing our, you know, to go into our minds and for our minds to create are what are going to determine our earthly destinies, okay? What class of people controls their environmental influences? The non-drifters. All who are victims of the habit of drifting forfeit their power to choose their own environment. They become the victims of every negative influence of their environment. Is there no way out for the drifter? Is there no method by which he may submit himself to the influence of a positive environment? Yes, there is a way out for drifters. They can stop drifting, take possession of their own minds, and choose an environment which inspires positive thought. This they may accomplish through definiteness of purpose. Definiteness of purpose is simply having a strong enough desire for something that you're willing to put in whatever work that is necessary in order to obtain it. It's all our biology, our neurocircuitry, our neurochemistry, our hormones, and even our gene expression will be equal to how we think, how we act, and how we feel. And how we think, how we act, and how we feel is called our personality. And our personality creates our personal reality. That's it. So the present personality who's listening to this show has created the present personal reality called their life. So if you can latch on to this idea, if you want to create a new life, a new personal reality, you got to change your personality, which means you better start thinking about what you've been thinking about and changing it. You begin to become conscious of your unconscious actions or habits or behaviors and modify them. And then we have to begin to look at the emotions that we live by every single day that are keep us connected to the past and decide, do these emotions belong in our future? So most people are trying to create a new personal reality as the same personality, and it doesn't work. You literally have to become someone else. Is that all there is to the act of eliminating the habit of drifting? Is the habit only a state of mind? Drifting is nothing but a negative state of mind, a state of mind conspicuous by its emptiness, emptiness, emptiness of purpose. They say that a mind is a terrible thing to waste, and this is because an idle mind is most definitely the devil's playground. And so this is why, uh, you know, drifters who are essentially empty vessels are so easily possessed and enslaved into becoming the quote unquote devil's co-workers okay the devil is only interested in those with a particular state of mind a state of mind conspicuous by its emptiness of purpose 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 so this is going to end lesson 28 my people uh thank all of the people who have been supporting the channel from day one uh my private no narc network members uh the people who donate uh, through Cash App, through PayPal, the people who, of course, purchase products and services from me, and my day ones, my wrench gang, and the people who just love me for me, okay? I return that to you hundredfold, okay? So this is going to be the end of Lesson 28, you guys. I will see you at Lesson 29, my people. If you need me, you know where to reach me. All of the information that you need is in the description box, okay? Peace.